Ronin's necrocraft are gaining on us. What's our next move? <laughs> that question implies there was some sort of plan to begin with. So it's just this simple, Kyle. It's just me with Disney Infinity. You know what I mean? It's just me who's got the figures. It's just me who makes the toy boxes. Yeah. I'm alone. I've had that in feeling. In this office. It happens to you, too? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been there. I'm that guy for a few games. Um, so I've dragged you in here. Yeah. Because not only did stuff happen for Disney Infinity 2.0, not only do I feel I was... Uh, treated very well by them. Um, you know, I, I love the you know the guys at the team they're putting it together. But uh, they really had their their stuff together at the show. They had you know they they blocked their own room out uh, that's not at the conference. So they uh, basically you know people on Wednesday and Thursday can get advanced access to it. You know and uh, get to sit down. People from the press can talk to the developers and stuff. And then they open up to everybody. So every time I walk by this building, there were always kids. They're like, yeah, I can get in there and like get my hands on this game. Where's this building? Uh, right next to the convention center. Oh, cool. It's on 4th uh, Ave, which, you know, 4th and 5th, like, leave right into the convention center. Um, super close, giant sign out front. You can't miss it. You know, big infinity thing. It was in the same location last year. And uh, just great to get AC, go in there and get a glass of water and play some infinity. They had a bunch of stations set up on all the consoles. Uh, so not only do they have a great presence, it was fun to check out the game, but comics, hello. I mean, it's, like, more comics characters in this game than... Maybe Lego Batman 3 is like the only other character, the game that has like just this huge flux of characters. So what did they show? You said they brought good stuff. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy was the big thing that they announced. Okay. Uh, right before, and so they had all the characters there, and uh, they showed off the playset. Um, one thing that's fun that people complained about before in the previous playsets is that all the figures were specific to one playset. So in this one, uh, they can branch out and go into other ones. So. Uh, in Guardian, Nova, who's in the Spider-Man playset, can also be played in Guardians, and Iron Man can be played in as well. But the way that works is you have to collect coins in the environment you have to find, and then when you get a certain number of them, then you unlock Iron Man. And the reason why is because Iron Man flies. So he would break most of the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. you just beat the game in two seconds. You just fly to the last platform and, like, yeah, yeah beat the level. So previously, like, uh, if I had the guy from Lone Ranger, I can't put him in Monsters University unless in I'm in the, the toy box. In the play set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. can jump in the toy box. So here, I'm playing through my, my story mode. I collect enough coins, and I can hop in as Iron Man and just... Wreck. Yeah, and go in and kick butt. That's and, cool. And it's not just like, oh, Iron Man... Pops in and then now I'm talking like the game recognizes it's Iron Man and he comes in and has a cinema you know like he they actually like wrote him into the story so like um, yeah when these characters cross like the game allows for it like the plots like this um, it's you're not just popping up out of nowhere like we did cherry pick these two characters to be included in this playset that is crazy because it makes that is sense. actually pretty weird but it, that's that's Marvel you know like the, yeah I think much more than DC you get a lot of synergy between the different properties and so it makes sense and hopefully something maybe they do down the road if they add like X-Men or Fantastic Four or some other, you know, Marvel properties. 19 figures, 19 characters from Marvel. That's Series that 1. They're going to be in the game. Uh, that'll be in Series 1 and some more stuff, uh, apparently, that they haven't announced yet. It comes out September 23rd. Does stuff mean vehicles? Um, stuff, no, it possibly means more characters. We need, oh, okay. oh, vehicles like the power discs and stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, maybe. Uh, maybe they're being a little tight-lipped about that. Yeah, you're right. It might just be power discs. I don't know. I thought maybe new figures. Yeah. Because um, they do have all the stuff that comes with the playlists, and then they have, there's the 19 Marvel characters, and then four Disney characters. They have Stitch and Tinkerbell, which were playable for the first time there, which were pretty fun. Tink can fly around, and she prances a lot. I didn't walking. realize that it was that disproportionate. So... 19 to 4 is yeah, the current yeah, yeah. count. 19 Marvel to 4. That's crazy. But if you add up all of the Disney properties that were included in the first game, it's like, it's like 30, 29, 33 to 19. Yeah. As far as the current status of Infinity. Still, for a game called Disney Infinity, yeah, that's a lot of Marvel. Marvel that's really cool. But definitely has a Disney vibe. Like, one thing I noticed when they introduced the Guardians of the Galaxy characters, Drax looks totally different. Like, Dra it is not the Drax in the movie. It right. is like an animated Drax. And I don't follow... The, the, the animated side of Marvel, I guess there's like a new Guardians show that hasn't happened or just started happening, and I guess they're more based on that. Um, I like how Venom looks. Yeah, Venom, yeah. yeah. It's it, it just, it's a, yeah, it's a different vibe for all these characters, so I like that, again, it helps seamlessly to put Venom next to Lone Ranger, and it's not like, okay, it actually does fit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, and then they had Maleficent and Merida, who they showed at E3. Those are like the other four brand new Disney characters. Um, but... One thing that I thought was cool that was a big thing that was missing from the first game, that they mentioned at E3, but they kind of got into a little more detail and, and, and announced some of the ones that they're doing for Guardians, is when people had, like, like Jack Skellington was the first example. So I got, when I got Jack, I was so excited. Like, oh, that's, like, the figure I can't wait. He looks so great. I got two of them just so I can put one on my desk. And then you, like, get him in Infinity, and you're like, 
okay, what do I do? Because he's not in a play set, so you can't just like play that play set a couple times yeah, and you... level him up that way. It's like, I guess I just spawn a bunch of bad guys and smack them around. You didn't really have anything to do. And so in now own levels, I see. they have mini games like tower defense and like little like makeshift fighting games where you're fighting characters and stuff that you can do in the toy box with anybody. And those will be themed so like Thor's got his mini game and like the Guardians of the Galaxy have their little mini games that you can do. And I didn't check them out nowhere near this amount, but they said there are 100. Whoa. So that sounds pretty cool. Go, be specific about the fighting one. That, that interests me. Um, wh one thing they added is uh, um, there were a lot of people that were like, I, you know, I want to build a soccer game, but like I don't want to take the time. And now you can literally just you know, select something from a list and select soccer game, and like you get the ball, the two things, all the rules are set up, the scoreboard, it's all ready to go, and you yep. literally just place it and go. But then I can also drop in cars. Or move any of it around or cool. change it. But you can see like, oh, that's wired that way, and that's plugged into that. That's how that works. And one of them is just like Smash Brothers. It's like it's set on a 2D plane, and it has all the different platforms, and you can jump around and like fight people and stuff. And it's not, I mean, you play Smash Brothers, and like it's so tuned to right, a T, right, right. you know, yeah. like it's just it fits and it's perfect, and so it's a little loose, you know, it's infinity. Um, but uh, you add that all to other, all of the other modes that they have, and it just gives you something to do when you're in the toy box. It gives you a way to level up these characters. Yeah, and the skill trees. That's what like is so cool to me. Yeah, and the um, one thing that's really cool that I I feel just from playing the last game and like you know following this game very closely, I think was like more than I thought they were going to do. I think it's a little above and beyond. Uh, you could level the characters up to fifteen before. And now you can level them up to 20. And if you've never had the figure, when you get them in, you can level them up, you know, all the way from like zero to 20. And they get 20 points that they can spend on their own skill tree. And every character that isn't a new character for Infinity 2.0 gets the standard skill tree. Like, uh, it, it actually says like in the text, it's, it says like, raise Phineas' attack. So it's not just like raise this random character's attack. So right. like, it is phrased to fit that one character. But if you want to like, take Ralph from Wreck-It Ralph and like make him like strong and like increase his damage and his like defense then you can do that if you want to like turn Tinkerbell into like a healer or support character you can do that or vice versa so I wasn't expecting that I thought I that was cool I can have a healer cool. Phineas right that's pretty cool and you can actually die in Infinity 2.0 like you can create modes where like if you're dead you're you're out you know so like healing actually does you know come into play very cool if you lose a character in the playset you have to like wait a certain amount of time before you and or and or you can stop and like put a character on or go back to another checkpoint. Cool. They try to make death like matter, you know, yeah. so you're not just it's not like Lego where you're just constantly going at it. Um, so yeah, so they got the Guardians playset, they got Spider Man, and they got Avengers, um, yeah, and all these other characters. Yeah. Uh, so the one announcement I was aware of was the the big the PlayStation Four. Like it's got it's like a display thing. Right. It's got a huge creature in the, behind it, and you put all the Avengers there. And that the Hulk is exclusive to PlayStation. For a while, for like a month, right. I think. Which yeah. they did with, um, they had a package when uh, Mickey first came out. Yeah. That you could, uh, I can't remember what console that was exclusive to. And you could get Mickey that way, but it was just like, again, like a month early. Here's the thing, Hulk's a, that's a great character. Right. That's a big one to hold back on, do you know right. what I mean? It, it kind of makes, I feel like that one, the definitive version. Do you think there's a, there's a problem with that? Um, I don't see as there, there's a problem with that because there are a ton of adventures. And like I said, there's like crossover characters too. So mm -hmm. like all of these play sets will be available when, it, when uh, all this stuff comes out. So, you know, if you like Hulk, it's a bummer, but it's not like, gonna, it's not like Skylanders where it's like, oh, I can't go in that area now. Right. It's like, you just can't play as Hulk. It's that simple, you know? Um, but, uh, yeah, it's not going to like, and, and maybe there might be an item or two that are like Hulk, maybe like Hulk has like fists or something that you can like pop out in the play in the toy box. Like you won't have those until you get the figure. Um, but yeah, I think I, I think they'll probably keep doing that. I think there'll be console exclusive stuff moving forward with the play sets and whatnot. Um, but again, it'll all be available. And I, I, eventually, I, I, right? It's and I didn't times. really I didn't really notice a lot of backlash with Mickey. Like people just seemed like I got to get my hands on that thing. I don't know how that affected sales for the big package. I mean, obviously, well enough that they um, wanted to do it. You know, with Hulk. Yeah. Uh, they announced the three villains too. Um, Ronan, who I'm unfamiliar with because I didn't read a lot of Guardians of the Galaxy, but he's the bad guy in Guardians. Okay. And um, they met. They they. What uh, about Modok? They referenced the uh, not well. They showed him in the trailer. Yeah. Um. So yeah, we'll obviously get him. I'm uh, imagining Loki, if they, they showed should... him. They should, yeah. They announced Loki and then okay. one other villain. Oh, uh, Green Goblin. Uh, for the from the Spider-Man playset. Oh, cool. Um. Yeah, because they love having the villains in there, and there's all sorts of stuff like in the cinema that they showed from the Spider-Man playset. Uh, um, Green Goblin's in there and Mysterio's in there, and he's kind of one of the villains in the playset. So it's like. Hmm, you know, are they going to release Mysterio down the road? Eventually, from Spider-Man. Yeah, uh, yeah. There's a lot of a lot of people. Um, uh, our own James Kohler spotted Captain Marvel in one of the trailers that's just kind of running around the background. Um, 
and one thing that they're doing is that's cool um, from a nerd perspective. I jumped in on one character and I was uh, um, I was Star Lord, and I hit the action button and he had a huge flaming whip, and I was like, oh. That's new for Star Lord, and he was like, "Oh no, that's Ghost Rider," and he took like the power disc off, and I'm like, "That's a legitimately cool power disc." Yeah, that is, you know, because cool. it's not just like they kind of branded some of the things before. Like one of the weapons you had was the the croquet mallet from Alice in Wonderland, and it's like, okay, okay, the birds, right? <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah it's yeah. like that. That's fun and iconic, but like that's not going to help me from a gameplay perspective, and like is kind of weird to put in an action game or a platformer to make it feasible. But like Ghost Rider's whip, hell yeah, you know, or and they have power discs that. Like the Winter Soldier's one, so if you put them on, it works on a cooldown, and then you activate it, and like Winter Soldier pops out, and he's just a little AI buddy, and he'll kick ass wherever you are. Um, so it seems to make more sense with Marvel. I know Marvel and Disney's kind of weird bedfellows, you know, sometimes, especially if it's just kind of like overtaking the Infinity franchise. But having all those different power discs, I imagine if you are a Marvel fan, it's like, oh god, I want to get that. I want to get that one little, yeah. you know, go- Goblin's glider, which is probably unlockable in the Spider-Man playset, but something like that. That um, is not only iconic from the comic books, but like, oh, I want to play as that, you know, like actually having like the whip. Do you think that there will be more people playing this game than the previous Disney Infinity game? Yeah. I think there will be too. Based on the ways you sound, it sounds a bit more like a video game. You know what I mean? It sounds more like something that the people who watch this video might be into. And it's pretty fun. Spider Man, uh, when I, again, this is just left over from E3, but I played the Spider Man playset a lot at E3, and like he's super fast. You know, it's not, I just played Spider Man 2 on PS2 a couple months ago, so Mm -hmm. it wasn't quite, you know, up to (laughs) that, that up to that, up to that level. But um, uh, it was fun. It was quick. Um, uh, All of the Guardians feel very different. They all have fun um, uh, abilities. Uh, Star Lord spits up turrets. Um, which is kind of fun. They haven't like experimented with that stuff before. They have wall climbing now, so Drax will like climb up a building. Stitch and Hulk can do that too. Um, so yeah, a lot of physicality. Um, uh, they're changing a ton of stuff. Changed the HUD. You know, they definitely had a lot of um, uh, things that they're fixing. And I've noticed a lot of people on Twitter when they announced like Twitch and some of these other characters. Uh, Twitch, sorry, uh, Stitch. Yeah, yeah. Um, when they announced these new characters, a lot of people were like, that's the character I wanted. I've been, I've been screaming ever since the first game came out. So it really feels like they're listening to the community. And, and, and when, they, when they announce something on Facebook or Twitch and they're like, hey, you know, what character do you want to see in Disney Infinity? That's not just like a promotional gimmick. Like they a- they actually do have a list that they're rattling stuff off. This one kid broke everybody's heart at the panel because he's like, is Stan Lee going to be in the game? Everyone's like, aww. John Miyake's like, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but it's, uh, that was like the number one question that everybody had. So I think... He's I, in Lego Marvel. Um, you can just stand Stanley, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Just do that. Um, exactly. Um, but yeah, there was, you know, people brought up X-Men, people brought up Fantastic Four, um, Squirrel Girl. I mean, there was all sorts of crazy Marvel properties that, that were mentioned. I think the first game got good buzz. Um, and yeah, they're adding more stuff to it and it's, you know, it's Marvel. It, it seemed like something that uh, people were psyched for cool. to see at the show. So... Thanks, Kyle. Thanks for coming in and letting no me problem. chat about it. You have me. You excited me for this game. Mission accomplished. <laughs> okay, you know what? We really need a battle cry. I am Groot. Nah. I am Groot. Nope. I am Groot. Well... I am Groot. Hmm. Maybe. 